Welcome uh, to the Digital Metrology Standard Consortium uh, monthly coffee chat series. Uh, I'm Ray Stahl. I will be your MC today for this webinar. Uh, this month's chat is uh, reporting with QIF and MODIS charts by Tom Lewis, uh, a product manager for Renishaw. Uh, next slide, please. So a couple of housekeeping uh, things before we start. You will be in listen-only mode. Um, you can ask questions during the presentation by entering them into the question panel on the control panel uh, that uh, should be displayed to the right of your presentation. If not, then go up to the, uh, to the top and, and open up that panel. Uh, please uh, send your questions at any time while we're, we're uh, having the presentation so we can address your, your questions at the end, at the Q&A section at the end of the presentation. And don't worry about note taking, this uh, webinar is being recorded and we will send uh, all participants today uh, in today's webinar, uh, attending today's webinar, uh, an email with a link to the recorded presentation. And with that, um, I'm gonna hand it over to Tom uh, to present uh, the, uh, presentation on uh, QIF and MODIS charts. Tom? Okay, thanks guys. So, like I said, I'm gonna be going through the reporting side of QIF that we use in our, our reporting software, which is called MODIS Chart. Um, and yeah, my name is Tom Lewis, and I'm the, the MODIS product manager. So while we go into the rest of the, uh, the presentation, I'm just gonna knock my, knock my camera off. Okay. So just wanted to, to kick off with a little bit of, of who we are and what we do. So within Renishaw, we do CMM inspection, uh, equator gauging and machine tool probing. So various aspects of the uh, measurement process uh, and during part manufacture. And then myself, I am the product manager. So I'm in charge of the inspection planning, uh, the program execution, and most importantly for this one, the reporting side of this. Um, but the key bit, just to mention in here is as product manager, um, I'm aware of what we're doing with QIF, but I am not the person who's implementing it. So if we start going into really technical questions, at that point, I might deflect a, to some of our uh, developers and ask them those questions. Okay. So to start off with, what were we trying to achieve? This is basically, what was our problem? Why did we start this journey? So we've got an existing, software product called Modus, and that's got an existing reporting tool. And that existing reporting tool required an update. As well as that, we've got development software tools, and that development software tool also needed a new reporting tool. So we've got two software packages here, and both of them have got the same reporting requirements. So ultimately, we want to try and make the same customer reports with them. Um, but the problem is that both of them are based on different software languages and both of them use different database structures. But ideally, we want a single reporting software which could be used with both of them. So the problem we needed to solve was, how can we dissociate our reporting software from our measurement software? And that was the ultimate goal that I had with the, the technical team. That's what we were trying to solve. So it's gonna be no surprises that's being in this meeting, but it's uh, QIF that we decided that was, was going to be the technology that we would um, deploy and, and use for the presentation of our, our metrology results. And the reason that we decided to do that was that by adhering to QIF3, um, our software Modus chart could be used to, to, to present data from multiple sources. So in my problem there, I had two software which I wanted to use, but it's completely dissociated and it could come from, from many different sources, provided it if I wanted to the three standard. But that did present some challenges. So to begin with, Modus Chart was a reporting only application. So all it does is report, it's not the metrology software itself. Um, so because of that, we needed to supplement the QIF results with some other custom information and other additional files which weren't supported by QIF. So we needed to put those in to try and get an overall solution. And, and I'm gonna go through those in a, a bit more depth in this presentation. So just before we start going through things in depth, I'll pop up the, um, 
the life ring here. I'm not going to go through it explaining what parts are. I think those have been done in other presentations, but it just gives a bit of context of the areas that we're focusing on um, for, this, for this product that we, we're using GIF with. So with it being reporting, we predominantly use the GIF results section of the life ring. So most of the things we're doing with reporting, we're looking at measurement result data. How can you present that in a report? But we are using a little bit of the QIF plans and a little bit of the QIF resources. So we use part of those, and I'll explain in detail why we use certain of those as well. So it's not the whole life ring that we're using. Predominantly results, but we are using, using the, the portions that make sense for our particular solution. Okay, so what's the, the workflow for how we're using QIF? So to begin with, we've got the measurement data being captured. And for chart, we're capturing data on CMMs using MODIS and also on our equator gauges using MODIS. So the data is coming from those two measurement devices. And then it's going onto a, a PC or, or equator controller into the measurement software. And from there, we can produce the QIF. So produce that QIF on that, that PC. Once that's been produced, then we can send it off to Modus Charts, do the reporting with completely separately. Now, Modus Chart can either be on the PC by the CMM, on the PC controller for the equator, or the QIF file can be sent elsewhere and the reporting can be done at a completely different location. So it's completely separate for when you're making the reports with, with charts. So I've got a little nod towards Demis here. Um, so within Modus 1, we are using DMIS, the DMIS standard. Um, and basically, the, the bit I put in here is just the command line that we use to create the QIF file that we use downstream. So a little bit of the note on here, we have got the QIF version number in there. So at the moment, if you put in that call extern command, you can choose to use version 3. When we first started using or first started developing chart, um, it was about three or four years ago, and that was the point before QIF was an ISO standard, and I think it was back with version 2.1 at, at that point in time. So that one isn't supported any longer, but the concept was by having the version number in there, if QIF is up issued for any reason in the future, we, we've got that version captured in the line and we could up issue and, and choose the, the various versions to work with. So one of the other bits that's uh, interesting in this, this command line that we needed to make an adaptation for was the coordinate system. So at the moment, all the data is output into a single coordinate system in the QIF. And within Modus, we store all the data in the machine coordinate system. But the QIF standard requires everything to be stored in a model coordinate system. It needs to be related to the model. So we've got a change in that command line that says, right, I want to output all of this data into the QIF in the name I've got here is main alignment data. So that's that's a datum that we chose that was associated to the model, and all the data would be with respect to that. So that was one one challenge that we needed to, to change to fit into that. And then alongside that, we store the transform matrix that then puts it back in the, the coordinate system that we want the data to be in. So the combination of those two allows us to have our data in one, one format in our software, fit with the standard, and still provide reports that look as we wish. And then once you run this command, the data which we output, it's all the actual and nominal data, um, feature specific data such as uh, diameter and length, um, and then the characteristic information. So high, low tolerance, data and reference frames, modifiers, etc. Now the characteristic information, that's the bit that, that is a bit more uh, aligned with the plans. So the QIF plan stores all of that characteristic information. We're sort of putting that in after the fact. I think strictly with the life ring, you're trying to put that in up front and then use it to create your, your measurement sequence, your measurement program. For us, we're putting it in retrospectively just so that it's in there in the right place when we use it, if anything changed in future. So it's, it's in those correct slots. It's just a, a retrospective addition. OK, so now going into what we were trying to achieve in the reports. The most basic style of reporting is, is a standard report table. So in here, you get all the standard features and, and standard tolerances. They're all supported in the, 
in the QIF standard. So those went in nicely. And we also put in some tolerance frames. So we decided that, that here we'd add the true position tolerance frame, cylindricity, concentricity. Um, that's a nice link with model-based definition. So when you're looking at the drawing or you're looking at um, your CAD model with PMI data on it, you'd be seeing these feature control frames. So we put those frames within the table so that they're, they're exactly the same what you see. Okay, so these tables all work nicely. But how do we solve it if the features aren't in the QIF standard? So this is where it begins to get a bit more tricky. So a couple of examples of this are, we've got uh, use toll, user tolerance style uh, outputs within Modus. And we do so though, some of those for probe calibration outputs. We do it for some bow seat outputs. Um, and we do it for some, some custom object tolerances for, for custom tolerances. So valve seat, for example, that's, that's not a standard feature, but that is still covered in QIF as a, uh, as a group feature. So that one's covered there. And the object tolerance is an interesting one because that's completely custom. Um, it's for non-metrology specific information. So it could be a non-metrology non number such as uh, number of points measured in a feature, you might need to tolerance that for some reason. So it's 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 not a standard feature that would be supported. So how do we put the uh, the information we need against these? There are a couple of a uh, couple of custom tolerances in the standard that we could make use of. So there was the use defined linear tolerance in there, and there's the use defined angular tolerance in there. And then the last one is the use defined unit tolerance, which is completely open. So Linear and angular for these, I think, is fairly self-explanatory, but the use-defined unit we need to do something a bit special for. So for this, um, there's an input for use-defined text, and against that, we could put in uh, a word or, or a description that would describe it. So if it was a percentage we were putting in there, we could use the use-defined text, put in the, the word percent in there, and then we would know exactly what that, uh, that piece of information was that we were reporting. Okay, so some of the, the other problems that we get is that was how we got the information into the QIF. So what I've just explained now, we, we can use all those inputs to put the data into the QIF and, and fit with the standard. But that didn't necessarily give us what we needed to, uh, to make our reports look correct. So we needed to also add some other information so that I could make these tables on the screen look how we needed them to for reporting. So the first bit we've got is uh, against the tolerance type, it's a, a used toll but we don't want that to go in our report. We don't want it to say used toll. We need to say something more meaningful. Um, so in this one, we use the sub subtype, so the, the tolerance subtype. And within that, we could put in the information that you're seeing in the tolerance column here. So in there, I'll look at the, the bottom one on the, the top, top table where it says RMS, that went in the tolerance subtype. So we're, we're showing what we need there. And then the next column across, which is the type, for that we're using the QI property what to measure. So root mean square error, that goes in the what to measure parameter. So we were able to use other parameters within the QAF standard to make sure that we could get the information we wanted to show the report we needed to show for our customer. So that covers the, the used toll tolerances and, and how we solve those issues. Surface finish was another interesting one. So we've got a, a number of surface finish tolerances and extra information. So in the QIF standard, we've got RA, which is covered in a, in a certain way. But within Modus, we've got over 30 different surface finish outputs. So we've got one for RA in the, in the QIF standard, um, but we didn't have a way of solving it for all these other surface finish tolerances that we wanted to add in. And also what happened is the, the RA one didn't quite give us what we wanted within the standard. So we used custom tolerances um, for all of these. And for, for most of those surface finish ones, it would then go in a, a, a used defined linear characteristic. So rather than using anything that, that was in the standard for surface finish, we're using the, the used defined linear tolerance. And we store that against a, a standard line in the, in the, in the standard. So it's, it's not there's any particular feature that we've added. It's a, a normal line in the QIF standard. That line has a, a custom attribute against it that identifies it as being a a line which was, was a surface finish measurement, and then we have all these 
um, use defined linear sort of custom attributes that we're we're using. So that's how we solved surface finish and we make that one fit in. And the last one that we had some interesting ones with are some other other shape features. So we've got some feature types, corners or five point rectangles. There's, there's a, a list of other features that don't really fit within the, the, the typical features that you'd measure with these devices. And there's another option within the standard called other shape feature. And for that other shape feature, we could put the information we needed for these. Okay, so one of the things that you'll notice on this screen that I popped up was the surface finish plot. So, so far, I've explained how we could get uh, report tables to work, but I haven't mentioned anything about plots. So that leads me nicely onto the next slide where I explain what we needed to do to get plots to work. So we've got various different plot types that we needed to be supported in our reports. There are off-CAD plots. I say off-CAD rather than 2D. This is a typical plot you'd expect to see on a, on a, a report, but if it's uh, showing flatness or cylindricity, that's still a, a 3D plot, but it's off the CAD. Then we've got what we call on-CAD plots. So you can see the plot is superimposed onto the CAD model. We've got heat maps. And then we've got surface finish data, which is a, effectively a, an XY plot. So those are the different plots that we need to, to somehow be able to produce in our reporting tool. And the problem with these is they all require point data, which isn't currently supported by QIF. Um, so the reason that is, is it, that it is evaluated data, which these plots require. Um, and we store all of this data in binary files, and these binary files are linked to the respective features using a, a custom attribute. So we could put all of this data in their own custom attributes within the, the single QIF file. That is possible. I think that's been mentioned in other meetings that, that all that data will fit in there. Um, the reason we didn't do it that way was just because there would be a lot of data um, that might be, make it difficult to find exactly what you're after in the, the QIF. Some of our point measurements with scanning could be thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of points if we're going into um, fringe captures. So we decided that we would put those in a, a separate binary file per, per torrent. So one thing just before I go into the details of how we made this work is that Modus chart will work quite happily without any of this extra binary data. Um, if you just use the, the standard QIF file, you'll be able to get all of your report tables um, as normal, so you wouldn't be affected by it. But if you want the plots, that's the point at which we need, need this extra data. OK. So why is the this data slightly different. So I mentioned that it was evaluated data. So all of these plots are plots of torrences, not plots of features. So I think within the standard, there's areas to put uh, measurement data, either raw or actual, but our data is evaluated data. Um, so the reason that this is, uh, is important is that it's uh, completely separate from the, the position of the data. So for a circularity plot, it doesn't matter um, where the circle is position-wise on the CAD model. You want it to be uh, evaluated regardless of position. So all of those positions of these, these plots I've got in the top right-hand corner, each deviation point there, that's the position of it with regards to a perfect circle because we're looking at circularity. When you superimpose that onto the CAD model, it's not the actual position of the data point. It's the evaluated position of that point. So it is something which is completely different, and it's something we needed to get right to make it look correct when we superimpose it onto the CAD model. It would look very strange if uh, you were trying to plot circularity onto a CAD model, and the plot appeared several inches to the side because the, the feature is out of position. You're only interested in form, so we have to put it uh, in the right place on the CAD model so that it can be interpreted correctly. So that's the extra data we, we needed as sidecar data to do plots. So what else do we need in reports? We need header data. So at the bottom there, that's a, a typical header where we put some information about the part that's been measured, perhaps the inspection, start and end time, the date, 
um, part number, et cetera, would all go there in header data. And that's always needed in a report. Um, so this isn't feature data. We've been covering perhaps feature data in the, the other slides in this presentation. Um, this data it is still stored in the QIF standard, but there's a, a couple of different ways that we've solved it depending on the exact data type. So like I say, most of the standard stuff is, is already in the QIF standard. So the start and end time I gave as an example, that is within the standard and that goes in the measurement results traceability area. So there is already a placeholder for that. And if the, the correct label is used in the R mode of program, it will drop into that placeholder in the QIF quite nicely. Um, something else which we, we put in here sometimes is the manufacturing device ID. And that's a bit where I mentioned that we, we use some areas of the QIF resources. It's nothing to do with the particular part that's been measured. It's more to do with perhaps the factory, the manufacturing machine, the measurement machine. Some of that information might be useful. So we, we put that into the QIF resources area. So that's the stuff which the, the QIF standard covers. We've also got further options which we add into the customer attributes area. So those are ones that we within Renish will find that our customers typically ask for. So yes, there's, there's the whole set which are covered by the QIF standard, but we've got a list of 10, maybe 20 other ones which we find our customers ask for. And we've added those in. So an example of that would be the other drawing name, other drawing revision, other drawing number. Um, so that's a, a certain label that's used in the DEMIS program that we look out for, and we can then store that in the uh, in a custom attribute in the QIF so that we can access it and put it into our headers. So those are the ones we're aware of. So between the ones covered in the QIF standard and the extra ones we've added, we end up with over 50 different options that can be put into these header input boxes. So that's quite a lot. We think we've covered, covered the most part of what we need, but we can't cover everything. It's, it's impossible to cover every single customer scenario. Um, so that's where at the bottom here, we've got a custom custom attribute. So for that one, the user can define their own, and but they need to use a, a specific prefix in the um, in their program, we'll look out for it and we can then put it into the, the chart header. So provided the program uses that prefix, which we, we explain, use this um, and it will appear in a, a custom attribute in the QIF and, and, and appear in the header. So those are the three levels of, uh, of information we use to get the data we need into the QIF and then into the header. So we started doing this at, at the top of the presentation for a modus on the CMM and modus on our equator gauges. Um, but there's been further uptake of QIF and chart within Renishaw and our machine tool probing division are now working on a solution that they want to fit in with this. So they want to integrate modus chart, the, the reporting software into their um, reporter software offering. And um, to do this, they're also producing QIF files. So throughout the presentation, I've explained what what we needed to do within Modus Metrology software to get the, the QIF in the format we needed so that we could use it in chart. To be able to do the same, the machine tool part of Renishaw will need to do that same work. Anything that we've done in a, in a custom way to see custom features, et cetera, they'll need to follow that same rule set if they want to use chart in the same way. So we get a, a number of different people. It's the same flow at the top of this slide outputting QIF and then outputting it to, to chart. So that's excellent. We're getting more divisions you know, using a, a single reporting software offering, um, and that helps consolidate, consolidate all of our, our efforts into to one software, which is excellent. Um, there are some more custom ones we're looking at on the machine tool side. They, they do have different features to what we're used to in inspection. I think the, the corners I mentioned earlier the five point rectangle I mentioned earlier are a couple of the ones we've sold so far. But uh, I believe from working with those guys that there are some more custom ones they're going to want us to look at some um, machine tool access outputs and, and other things that we'll be looking to fit into the standard with them. So that just further consolidates QIF as the use for the, the data transfer between all these different pieces of hardware and then consolidates into a, a single reporting tool, which 
which ultimately was our, our aim at the start of this. So that's where we're up to, but what next? Where do we need to go to? So like I, I said, the, the, the current solution requires each software to produce its QIF file to be read into chart, and they must each do their, their own production of that QIF file. So how can we make that uh, a smoother process and, and consolidate efforts further? So we've got another piece of um, software which is being worked on within Renishaw called Renishaw Central. Um, and in terms of what that does, I'm not going to go in, in depth of the, the product, but that's essentially an industry four offering, which I'm sure lots of people here will be familiar with. Um, and that, that software is trying to collect all of the data and information off all of the Renshaw piece of hardware. So it's connected to that Renshaw hardware. It is collecting the metrology results information that we need for the QIF, uh, along with a, a host of other pieces of information off, off these machines. So if we're already collecting all of the data for, for an industry four offering, could we not use that same data to produce our QIF? So rather than Modus producing the QIF, our new metrology software producing QIF, the machine tool division producing QIF, you know, several different locations, and that may grow further. Instead, all of those softwares can put the information into Renishaw Central, and then Renishaw Central can be the place which makes the QIF. So it means everything is, is done in, in one hit, um, rather than developing and trying to keep anything in line across the various products. So Renishaw will still put everything into the, the correct slots of the standard. Um, it just saves it, like I say, doing, doing it two or three times. So this diagram here is effectively explaining that, that same solution there. We've got those three pieces of hardware at the moment, and all of that data is being harvested into Renishaw Central. Okay, so just to, to prove that concept a bit further here. So this is a, a quick screenshot of, of the Renishaw Central product, um, showing data being collected off machine tools, equators, and CMMs, and whether those particular inspections are passing, failing, etc. And there's a pop-up here, I hope that's clear, um, where you can click on one of these ticks or crosses for, for, the, for the job in question. So those ticks and crosses are for a, a single part run, um, you can click on that tick and cross and get more information about that part. And that's the area where we're hoping we can put this, um, I've put the, the QIF um, icon here. I'm not saying it will be exactly that one, but, but it might be something similar. And by clicking that button, it will then go off and produce the QIF. Um, it may be that we automate that for certain situations, um, or it may be that uh, it needs to be a user action to click that button and say, right, please, can you produce me the QIF file for this? for this particular run, uh, and then that will, will go off and produce it, and then chart can open, be opened and run with that to, to create that report. Okay, so I've gone through all of that fairly quickly. I haven't shown too much of the, the overall chart product, so I've put a, a quick screenshot up there um, just to show that, but are there any questions that go through and ask about how we've implemented this solution? We do have a few questions um, in the question chat box. Would you like me to read them off and we can go through them? That sounds good, Ray. Yes, please. Okay. Um, so the first question, uh, and, and this course came throughout the, the presentation, uh, are you planning to integrate QIF with Inspection Plus? Um, I think the second half of this probably explains a little bit about the, the direction of travel, where we're hoping to, okay. to, to produce the QIF from, from central and just collect all the data from the hardware before then, so, so not necessarily integrating with other, other softwares at this point in time. Okay. Well, I, actually, the, so the next question was, is, is Modus Chart a standalone product? Uh, does, it, does it work on non renishaw products? So I'll answer those as two separate questions. Um, okay. So it is standalone. It is a standalone product. Yes. Um, if you if you have Modus, then you can get 
well, provided you have the, the latest version of Modus, then you can get Chart for free. It comes along with it. It is standalone, but it's, it's provided with it. It's part of the solution. Um, but yeah, you can you can take it separately. You can put it on separate PCs and, and have yeah. um, the option to use that completely separately. Yeah, it is standalone. Um, in terms of using it with other products, um, to date, we've only used it with our own QIF bars. Um, so I couldn't say for sure that it would work with other, other products. The intention was to follow the standard as best we could. Uh, I, and I think we have done that, but there might be some little bits and pieces where we've used yeah. custom attributes, et cetera. So if someone else did have a QIF, I think we'd have to have a look at it and, and make sure that it's okay. all. So there's a nice segue here. The next question is what version of Modus uh, will be supported by uh, Modus charts? Um, so there's a version of Modus which has already been released. So I should have mentioned that in the presentation I meant to. So this is released now. It's, you know, this is QIF in action in, in true release products. Um, it's Modus 1.11, which can produce um, produce QIF files. That's the first version that does it. And that's been out in the market for about nine months now. So it is out there being used. Um, and then, yeah, chart would be any version. There's been a couple of versions released um, that are compatible with Modus 111. Okay. Um, and then uh, the, the next question is, can you share uh, some thoughts on Modus or Renishaw's regarding future planned use of QIF MBD or AP242? Um, I will touch on it a little bit, but this, this side of it I wasn't so prepared for. Um, we are continuing to develop versions of Modus. So there are, are a couple of different um, versions in the pipeline that will be coming out. And uh, there are plans to try and make sure we can support PMI. Um, and do, um, those versions you've mentioned there, we're hoping to have support in a, a future version. It might not be the next one out, but hopefully the one after that won't give any timelines. <laughs> it's in the plans. Yeah. It's in the roadmap, right? <laughs> yeah, it is on the roadmap and it is in the not too distant future. We are hoping to get PMI nicely covered with the model-based definitions, yes. Um, and, and this one, the next question is, uh, does it uh, does uh, it also consume, edit a QIF file or, is, or, or only create a QIF file? Now, that's a good question. And again, I, I should have elaborated more on this in the presentation. So apologies for that. At, at the moment, we are very much at the production end of this. So everything we're doing is purely for using the QIF downstream in a reporting software. Um, we can't yet read it in. So we're trying to make sure that we put the data into the QIF in a way that would hold up, should it be part of a life cycle. But no, we're not yet uh, we're not yet reading reading QIF in. Okay. Thank Again, that, that's one that it's not that we're saying within Modus that we will never do that, but that one isn't quite as far along as the model based definition in terms of roadmaps. Okay. Um, so. That is the current questions. I'm going to leave this open for just uh, 30 seconds more. If anybody has any any last minute questions that they want to ask uh, Tom, uh, please uh, put it in your chat box um, and we'll ask them. Otherwise, we'll uh, wrap up the meeting. So 30 seconds and we'll be back. Uh, all right. One more question just came through. For all uh, for all features that are reported, does the Modus charts automatically create the chart to do the uh, do, or we have to create the video view? Excuse me for each feature as shown in the presentation. Good question. Yep. Um, so there's a couple of different options. Uh, it depends on how complex a report you want. So. Um, all of the data for, for the characteristics is within the QIF. So we've got an automatic button. It's actually on this slide. It's a, a good one to have it on. So on the left-hand side here, about halfway down the panel, you can see that there's a feature selection manual as the option. And across to the side of that, it says automatic. If you click automatic, the software goes through and finds all of the torrences that are stored in the QIF and puts them into a results table for you. 
Um, so because it's all, all there in that correct part of the QIF, we can read it through and just put it in the, the order of the characteristics in there. So that gives you a single button click to produce just a report table. If you want to produce something a bit more complex, like you're seeing on the screen here, where you've got the CAD view and the plots on it, um, that one you do have to make manually. So you choose the features that you want to see and you position the model at the right angle on the screen and the boxes so that they don't overlap one another and, and position that. So it's um, it should cover both ends of the spectrum. If you just want a one hit, that's in there. And if you want to make something really, really neat, then you can uh, can go around and do that as well. Excellent. Uh, and then the last question I have today was uh, a request for a copy of the presentation. Uh, are, you, are you comfortable giving a PDF or? Absolutely. Yes, I shall share that with everybody. No problem at all. All right. So we we will uh, send it to uh, to send it to Mark, and and we will uh, put it on on the website uh, as part or part of the links to the the presentation. So that'll be available to all participants. And that is all the questions I have. So we're going to conclude today's presentation. Um, on behalf of the DMSC, I want to thank Tom Lewis for uh, presenting today. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, next month's coffee chat is titled Closed Loop Manufacturing with QIF, presented by uh, Carrington uh, Engineering and Mitsutoya America. Uh, that will be July 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern uh, Time. Uh, you can find out more uh, at, at uh, qifstandards.org slash events. Uh, select the July, July 27th QIF Tech Series co coffee chat to register. Um, and, and that includes uh, today's uh, presentation. Um, I want to, again, thank you, uh, Tom, for presenting. And I hope the rest of you all have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your day. And that concludes our meeting. Thank you.